Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you my video editing process in Premiere Pro. This is the process that I found is quickest and easiest for me. Uh, I'm not saying it's the only way you can edit videos, but hopefully it will be useful to everyone who's uh, maybe starting out in video editing. Also, there should be some good tips in here for those of you who are more experienced. So without further ado, let's just get straight into it. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is go to File, New and Project. And then we're going to rename our project to whatever you want it to be. I'm going to put Video Tutorial. And I'm going to copy that for the moment as well. And then just go down to the bottom right hand corner and click Create. The next thing we want to do is go to our import box here in our bin and just right click, click on Import. Navigate to where your files are. Highlight them all. And import. Alternatively, you can just drag them into your bin. Wait for those to import. You can see they're 60 frames per second. I'm going to right click while they're all highlighted. I'm going to go to modify and I'm going to interpret that to 30 frames. I like to shoot in 60 and then change it to 30 for a nice smooth uh, video. I'm now I'm going to take the first one in my series. Now I know for a fact I shot these a little out of order. I shot outside first because it was super humid and I didn't want my camera to get all steamed up from being in the cold. So I'm going to select the clip I want to start. I'm just going to work my way down uh, from top to bottom so I don't miss any. And I know the first couple of uh, takes I took weren't that fantastic. So I think I'm going to start uh, with the second one. Uh, the best thing to do is just to scrub through. Just grab that little marker and find your in point just by moving it around till you're happy where to start and hit I on your keyboard and then drag it along to where you want the out point to be and then just hit O. At that point, you can just drag it into your timeline. I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit so I can see clips clearer. Now I can highlight that and press V to paste the name of the sequence. And I'm just gonna go through all of my other clips in order, dragging through, hitting I, hitting O where I want the out point to be, and then just dragging them into my timeline. You can also hit insert uh, and that'll drop it right next to the other clips. And just keep going through each one, finding your in point, hit I, drag it through to where you want the out point to be, and hit O. And then you can just hit insert and it'll just pop it into the timeline for you. So your sequence is building up nicely. Just keep this process going, just dragging through. Mm, don't really like that clip. Next one, let's have a look. This one I know I started from a different location. I preferred it, so I'm gonna go to the next clip. And this is the one I wanna start with inside. So this one, I'm just gonna get the in point again, hit I, find my out point by just dragging it through. This is the quick way to do it rather than just playing it in normal time. And you can also see if it's nice and steady as well by dragging it quickly and hit O and insert. Now I'm just gonna continue with the rest of these clips like this until I've built my, my basic timeline with all the clips that I need in the right order. So hitting up or down on your arrows will take you to your next clip. So down and up just scooches you through really nice and quickly. I also recommend that you set up keyboard shortcuts. If you go to uh, a Premiere Pro and then click on keyboard shortcuts, you can see all of the shortcuts here. These are the most common ones I use, those three there. Um, you can set up whatever you want though and just get used to using them. You can have a look down and see everything that's listed here so you can familiarize yourself. It helps you really speed up your process. Also, if you wanna change your windows, and uh, instead of using your mouse and moving around, you can just hold down shift and hit one, two, three, or four, and it'll move you around your different windows much quicker than grabbing your mouse. If you can avoid using your mouse at all, you'll speed yourself up a lot. If you hit B, you'll get this, which is your ripple edit tool. And uh, as you can see here, it will just drag it along. And also if you want, you can drag it straight to a line. It will click into place if you've got your little magnet here clicked on it will clip in exactly when you get to it so if you're making markers or anything like that it makes it very easy to do hit v for your move tool again or c for cut which is your razor tool so you can cut so just learn some shortcuts and it'll make things much much quicker to duplicate a clip you just literally hold down option and drag that clip to wherever you want it to be if you want to move a clip to a different position, 
you simply just hold down the command and drag your clip to where you want it to be and I'll insert it in front where the arrows are pointing. Okay, for time remapping, just some simple ones here. What I want to do is just be able to get a better look at my clip so I can move that line up, just drag it so that it opens up the clips to make them a little bit more visible. Then I'm going to find out where I want to remap. So this is a long clip. So I'm just going to scrub through the clip and see where I want my in points and out points roughly to be. I'm just going to trim the front there. I don't want that bit because it's a bit jumpy. And I think that clip, that clip looks fine. I'm going to end it probably about there. So now what I need to do is right click on that little notch you can see there in the corner. And then you can change that to time remapping. Just hit speed. And now there's a little uh, keyframe button there you, you, can, you can just click on which will add your first keyframe and then drag to where you want to be for your second and then click it again. So you've got your two keyframes. Now just drag up to increase the speed. I'm going for around about 900 to 1000. Again, I'm going to zoom in now and you can see this just needs a little alteration. So drag these into the middle and then you've got your ramp to make it smoother. Clip, clip, click on the outside little notches and then just move them out so it makes a smooth ramp. Just delete that frame that you've created a space of there just by hitting uh, your backslash button. And then you can just play it through and see how it looks. It's a bit too long at the start, probably trim that and it probably could do with going a little bit faster. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna zoom in now, get it nice and tight and I'm gonna go in and find the little point where I can drag the speed up. And then just increase that to whatever you want I've gone for about 1100 or 1200 there, I think. And now I'm just going to trim that beginning part a bit more. I can use my ripple edit tool to do that. Now I'm going to get rid of that last little bit there at the end as well and remove that empty frame. And I'll play it back and see how it looks at that faster speed. I'll probably do some warp stabilizing on that. It's a little bit jiggly. And now I'm just going to trim that last little bit again and remove that frame and just play it back and see how it looks. And you can alter that to however you want. You don't just need to add a ramp uh, in the middle. You can also add ramps at the start or end of your clip uh, so that it goes uh, into a clip fast or out of a clip fast. Just by using the same technique, just add your keyframes in and then speed up to as much as you want. Uh, zoom in a little and then you can drag it and then just make a nice smooth ramp by moving that little curve and expanding it out so that when you go into the frame, it will just zoom into the frame. Well, not zoom in, but speed into the frame like so. And you can do that going out and you can do that also going into another clip to create a different effect. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is start uh, coloring everything. So what we're going to do is go to File, New and Adjustment Layer. Just click OK. All the settings should populate perfectly as per the sequence. And then you have your Adjustment Layer and your bin, which you just drag over. Pop it into your timeline and just expand those edges so it stretches across all of your clips. Highlight that. And then what you're going to do is just bring in a LUT. I've got another tutorial to create LUTs, but please watch that. I've got one I created here and just click open. And that will put generic adjustments onto all of my clips. Now I will need to go through each clip individually. So I need to go into Lumetri scopes and that will bring up my scopes you can see on the left. The idea is to keep that nice and even within those scopes so the range doesn't really clip too much at the top at 100 or down at zero. So we want to be careful to keep that kind of in the middle, expanding out between zero and 10 and 90 to 100 with not too much clipping. So I'm just going to go through the clip and have a look at it. And now I'm going to go over to my Lumetri scopes uh, Lumetri color, sorry, on the right hand side and make adjustments. Now white balance is key, so I'm just going to take my white balance picker and choose the white area. That should clean it up quite nicely. And now I'm just going to increase uh, the whites and take the shadows down uh, a little bit as well. Everything else contrast wise just needs tiny tweaks. And now I'm just going to make sure that all my colors are balanced as nicely as possible and just move to the next clip after you're happy and repeat the same process. 
So I said, uh, as before, just grab your white balance and click in the white area. And bring your shadows down between 0 and 10 and your whites up between 90 and 100. A little clipping is okay for the windows because I'm never going to that, get that exposure back. I don't have the uh, dynamic range for that. Another way to do this is to go down to your curves, drag down the lower part for the shadows and the higher portion for your whites. Also, if you want to remove any color casts, like for this one, for example, I don't like too much of that orange that's around the lights on the ceiling. I'm just going to use my white picker to get the whites correct, and you can see it really clearly now. Go down to Hue versus Saturation, use the picker to choose the color you want to reduce, and then just drag the center dot down. It's as simple as that. Let's just show you that again on a different one. Let's have a look. So there's some blues here coming from outside that I want to reduce. So again, just click on that area and you can see the three dots. Just drag down the center one there and then you'll reduce the blue. And if I can just put that back, you'll see it on and off. It's reduced that blue right down. Okay, so now we're just going to cut everything to our music. I've selected a track already and imported. Just hit Command I to import and then drag it onto your timeline into the audio section which is underneath the normal video section here. I've expanded this a little bit. You can just move it up and down here so you can get it a little bit bigger and you can see the waveforms. I'm also going to just make it a little quieter. This is your volume control here. So I'm just going to drag that down just by one and a half to decibel, something like that just because usually I find it's a little bit too loud. And I know this music track is a little slow to start off and it starts off a little bit quiet. So what I'm gonna do is just trim that. And I'm gonna use uh, my trim tool here, which I do by hitting uh, the V button. And then I'm just gonna bring it into around about here. And you can also add default transitions. I'm gonna hit uh, double click on the end here and then apply my default transition. This one is exponential fade as you can see by hovering over. You can add these um, default transitions to your uh, video tracks as well, which I've done a few here, like the dip to black, just by double clicking on the end and applying default transition. To change your default transitions, you can just simply go into your effects. And when you select the one you want, just right click on it and then set selected as default transition. But anyway, never mind about that. I'm just going to move this track back to the start now, zoom in a little and hit play, just hit enter. Okay, so I want that to come in a little bit later. So let's extend that. So the way I like to do this is just play the music through uh, while I'm watching my video and just have a feeling for where I want that clip to end. And then I'm gonna wait for the beat to come and I'm gonna hit space to pause it. So I'm just gonna play through the track. and I'm gonna pause it on the beat. If I've missed the beat slightly, you can just hit right or left on your arrows and you can hear it coming in, so that's perfect. Now to trim to the beat, all you need to do is hit your B and that will give you this one here, which is your ripple edit tool. And then just bring it back and it will click into place so it knows exactly where it needs to be. That's if you've made sure you've got your snap in timeline selected. Now that's it, enter again. And that's perfect. So we'll just repeat that as we go through. I want it to be there. That's long enough for me. Now I think I've got too much at the start here. So I'm just going to trim a good chunk off the front of that clip and go back again. And then that's fine. So I'm just going to trim that in again. Again, you can zoom in as much as you want to get more accurate. And again, just pause it where you want and then trim your timeline. That's perfect. And I want that to end there. And you just continue that throughout the whole timeline. And let's just play the first few clips back again and check it out. Okay, so one thing to think about when you're doing this is listening to the changes in the music, making your cuts to go with the changes. When the music speeds up, 
then maybe you can put in more of your detailed shots and you can cut those in a little bit quicker. I've got some here, you can scrub through very quickly like this. And I've got some quicker cuts that I made here. go so that's very easy and very quick and you should be able to get that done in no time so all I need to do now is add some transitions I've added my default transitions on here my dip to black for the end and I've got my uh, fade in for the music and I could also do a right click and add my uh, dip to black and you can add transitions as you go along as well. I don't like to add too many, but I've put a few in here. Some of the transitions I've got are actually with um, time remapping, uh, as I showed you earlier. I like to use cross dissolve for some when I've got two clips that are going the same direction. Let's just turn the music off. As uh, so you see, this one is scrolling from left to right, and the next one is as well. So they go really nicely together with the cross dissolve. And it's very easy to add this. Just go into your effects and then you can either search or you can go through it and have a look, see what you've got. If you just type in what you want, you should be able to pick it up very quickly. Cross dissolve uh, and film dissolve are just here under the dissolve section. Very amazing. And you just drag and drop it wherever you want it to be. Like so. Don't want that, so let's get rid of it. Uh, there's many others you can try here uh, and also if you want to get a little bit more fancy you can import some transitions i've imported some from Invato elements and i've added some zoom in transitions and uh, some other bits and bobs so i don't like to use too many for the start of this video i tried using a zoom uh, and you can see it looks okay uh, might keep that in zoom transitions are great i've got another one here which is going to be uh, glitch transition so the lights are off in this clip and the next clip they're on so it's not perfectly lined up but if I added a transition you don't really notice and the glitch transition is lovely okay uh, what else have we got and I'll put a zoom transition in here when we go to the sauna I've kept that in forward motion and used a zoom so we're going through to the next clip and then there's another cross dissolve so really it's just playing around and getting to know what looks good and what you like and what you don't like just don't overuse them it's quite simple to do and at the end I've just faded out fade to black and it's that simple once you've finished and you've got your whole timeline finished complete music added any logos you want to add or anything like that then simply go to command M and it will go to the export or you can click on export at the top here rename to whatever you want it to be set the location by clicking on here and then I've got a preset that I like to use which is my 4k best quality so let's click on that so the format is h264 I recommend you use that click on video and you can see the settings of the frame size and everything here click on more and you can see here my settings that I like to use. I like to use 5.2. I like to do two passes if I have time. And that's my bitrate for my high quality uh, videos. Then you just simply click export and your export will begin. Very simple to do. Once you've set your, um, your preferred settings, then you can just click here and then save your preset and rename it however you like so you can come back and use it. I've got various different ones here, uh, 4K, Instagram, and a few other different ones that I've added for reels, etc. So once you've got it set up the way you like, then you just click on your preset and then you can just export without having to worry about what your settings are. Right, so that's my process. Hopefully that was useful. And if you have any comments or tips, tricks, anything or any way that you do things better, then please do put those in the comments and then we can all learn from each other. Uh, and hopefully all improve together. So thank you again for watching and see you on the next video.